past week, we saw the destructive power of a hurricane as it slammed the west coast of Florida. Uh, we see that the wind and the rain and the flooding and the tidal surge just did a massive amount of destruction. But what always surprises me when we see one of those hurricanes are those who stay behind. Uh, most of them believe that their house is built strong enough and, and many of the codes in Florida require you to build a house that can withstand a, a level four hurricane. But oftentimes, despite all the best efforts, even the strongest of houses will tumble. And whether it's the wind or the rain or the, just the amount of the tidal surge and all the forces that hit at once, uh, the houses collapse and fall. And in those moments, as we've listened to people talk about the, the horrifying experiences of wondering whether or not they're even going to live, uh, we are just amazed at the power of the storm. You see, so often those who stayed behind were trusting in the strength of the building that they were in. They were trusting that it was going to be strong enough for them um, and that would shield them from the storm. But as we go through life, we realize also that often many of us take for granted the power of the forces that are against us. We are reminded that we do not fight against flesh and blood, as Paul says in Ephesians 6, but against rulers and principalities of the heavenly host. Uh, we're up against the wiles of the devil that we are told to stand firm in. As we've been looking at the armor of God, Paul reminds us of the shield of faith, that as we go through our lives, the shield protects us not only from the fiery darts of the devil, but from so much in our life. Uh, they can be small events or they can be catastrophic events that really profoundly affect our spiritual walk. You see, as we go through our life, that shield of faith is far more powerful than we think it is because it is a faith in the living God, the all-powerful God who holds all things in His hands and who reminds us of His power and His might as is poured out on us. I love these words that David prayed just after uh, he defeated, or shall I say, God defeated the Philistines. It reads like this, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. You save me from violence. See, that same God who saved David in his battle against the Philistines is the same God who's alive and is there for you. Have you put your trust in him? Is God your faith? Is he your shield? Is he your rock of salvation? I'm Bob Warner, and I'd like you to think about that.